react india right so clearly we set the tone right uh, this is not going to be a serious talk right uh, any stretch of the imagination uh, but while we start I'll quickly introduce myself name is selesh uh, i am a color blind uh, front end engineer and uh, accessibility evangelist and i have gotham with me hey everyone i am gotham and i am a overnight turned musician oh, okay then that was in the introduction i was expecting yeah. uh, how did that happen yeah i asked alexa how do i get become a musician it said buy a ukulele Wow. Okay, but do you really know to play a ukulele? Yeah. Brilliant. That's exactly what happens when you get the tool without the knowledge, and that's exactly what happens when we start using Lighthouse without even knowing what accessibility is, right? So that's that's what we are going to spend time on for the next ten fifteen minutes. Uh, like we had in the earlier discussion, we'll quickly talk about what is accessibility. A very simple definition for everyone: it's the ability to access. now the thing to comprehend is whose ability are we questioning here or whose ability are we talking about right i'll take you a little down memory lane back in my school days and i'm sure all of you would have done a lot of coloring you know within those lines and stuff like that so i used to do that as well so i had gotten this you know chart where i had to color a scenery we've all learned you know grass is green leaves are green sky is blue and i used a set of crayons to start coloring so if you look at the crayons it had color names written on it easy for me to pick up the right color start coloring only till i actually went into the exam and i had to color the same bit again and i thought oh you know piece of cake i've done this many times and this was the set of crayons that were given to me right now me being color blind i had no idea what to pick right now if you look at the scenario i am still the same the scenery is still the same the color set is still the same but yet my impairment is now become a disability but what's changed in this entire scenario this is what really happens people only have impairments it's bad design that makes them disabled right so building building on this thought even further i'm sure you all have seen this image before in the recent past it's been trending saying it's a piece of art it's been really creative very inclusive because it's got a ramp it's got stairs and stuff like that it's built on the basic pretext that the moment we say accessibility the first thing that comes in our head is a person on a wheelchair and honestly we are not to blame for it because that's what the logo of accessibility is it's a person on a wheelchair but accessibility is way beyond this and if you were to decipher this particular image even further what happens is a blind person is trying to walk these stairs he climbs four stairs and encounters a tilted ramp and he tries to negotiate that gets on a few set of stairs again and then he has a tilted ramp which is actually tilted the other way so you can imagine the kind of struggle that that blind person is going through with this piece of art right uh so what's the message then you know generally we say my site is compliant great it is compliant but is it accessible and how are these different so gotham if i were to ask you yeah. given this context if you were to ignore the accessibility compliance norms let's not talk about a double a triple a what else can i look at when i talk about accessibility yeah generally a double a triple a they come because they are easy to remember we are going to talk about something different which is the poor concept can i have a raise of hand who all know about poor concept or have read about it okay very few people so let me talk about it a bit and one thing that i have seen in my career is remembering this is a really difficult task so i am going to simplify this for you as much as possible so we'll look at the first thing which is p right so perceivable understand we need to understand the concept how do we perceive information we have multiple senses through which we communicate we have ability to see we look at things we see uh, we hear things we touch things we speak and we have cognitive ability to comprehend all of this information and people may have one or more than one disability because of this and those disabilities may not be permanent right they they can be different kind of impairments they can be temporary situational but let's look at what all senses do we use out of all the senses that we looked what all senses do we use to target our website right it's just visual sense so this is a really great website okay it is uh, cutting edge technology built with cutting edge react and has 
perfect responsive layout. But you know what? This is how it appears to a visually impaired user. A blank screen. So that brings us to a question. How do people with visual impairment browse website? Because knowing that is important. Because we know how people with, uh, who are sighted use a computer. They use screen. They get output on a browser. But if you don't know what a browser is, will you be able to build a website? No. So let's look at what is a browser for people with visual impairment. So these are screen readers. And there are multiple screen readers that we have. We have JAWS, NVDA. Uh, we have VoiceOver on Android. right? So multiple screen readers. And we need to learn them so that we build our websites for diversity and not treat them edge cases. And this is important principle. So let's look at the other principle. Now we know what is the P stands for. The other principle is operable. Once you have perceived the information from the side, you need to interact with it. It needs to be operable. So what are different ways of operating a website? We use mouse. What if we remove the mouse? Then we have keyboard available. And why is keyboard important? And how is keyboard accessible? OK, so we'll look at how it is accessible. So you might have seen these underscore marks on the keyboard on key F and J. Why do they exist? They tell you where you need to keep the index finger of your left and right hand. You put your left and right hand finger on the F and J, corresponding key fingers on the respective keys, and then your hands are in perfect typing position. Every key on the keyboard is just one move away. And that's the perfect typing position. So even people with visual impairment can easily use keyboard if they know how to type. And they can be trained easily. And there are different accessibility tools which are built, which are using the same concept. And they are relying on keyboard as an input. For example, people with motor disability use a device called Sip and Puff. So if you look at the left corner of the screen, the person who is holding this mouthpiece is actually sipping and puffing air out of the mouth and is able to interact with key, uh, computer using predefined keystrokes. So a combination of sip and puff becomes a keystroke. And this helps them interact. And similarly, we have just talked about people who are blind, people who have just one impairment. What if a person is having more than one impairment? What about deafblind people? How do they browse computer? Will they be able to use screen reader? How do they get the output perceived from? Can we use the touch sense? Yes, that's what we use. So in the top middle row, the thing that you see was a, uh, uh, it was an E display, uh, E braille display, right? So you can Google search for the image. It's an E braille display and it's used by the touch sense to uh, get the output from your screen reader. But why is it important? Right? And how do you get to know uh, about building these accessible websites is by following a one simple challenge. Once in a week, have a no mouse day. Leave your mouse disconnected from your computer and browse all the websites that you build, the websites that you like, just using a keyboard. And you will understand the pain that the people with impairment follows daily. And that will help you build better websites. Try using screen readers for that week. right? And moving on, the U in poor stands for understandable. And I was looking for multiple examples for explaining this until I encountered this tweet. So this guy is a very famous politician. And he is known for his linguistic skills. And this tweet explains us. You need an Oxford dictionary to understand what it means. And People with cognitive disabilities do encounter that with a lot of websites because the content is not targeted to them. So understanding that your audience may have people with cognitive disabilities and targeting content for them is also very important and not standing out like a person like this, right? So that's very important. And combining all of this, right, is the last principle of making it robust. So what does this mean? Let me give you an example. So we have seen while crossing the roads, there are a lot of time where people are not able to cross the road because the pavement is high. 
One simple solution is you remove the pavement, make it a slope, and people are able to cross, right? Especially with people with wheelchairs. But how does this make the design robust? Now, there is a lady who is walking with a kid in a stroller. Now, she is also able to cross the road from that pavement. There is a person who is moving the load across the street. And now that person also leverages the same pavement and is able to cross the road easily. So, a simple principle of poor not only help people with impairments, but people who are in situational disability. So, it is important to build good designs that help people remove the roadblocks. That's brilliant. Uh, so, a quick trivia for everyone, right? Uh, let's look at this image and uh, how many of you see a specific number in there? Just a show of hands. Great. What number do you see? Brilliant. How many of you see 21? Do we have anyone with 21? You see 21? Brilliant. Anybody who does not see any number? You don't see any number. Brilliant. We are of the same community, that means, right? So that's the challenge that we are talking about, right? You will always encounter a few people who don't see the number 74. For the ones who see 74, how do you design for somebody who's seen 21 here? You practically can't because you don't even know what I'm going through. Right? It's difficult for you to comprehend and understand unless you go through it yourself. Right? So it makes life difficult. So what do we do in Sapient? Uh, if the clicker works. Right. So what do we do in Sapient differently? Uh, we believe in the concept of nothing for us without us, which basically is the premise of how we built our accessibility COE, which has people with impairments. Who have, we have people with physical impairments, visual impairments, hearing impairments, and we have these people test applications for us so we realistically know what the end user is experiencing so that we are able to get everybody on board together and make the experience whole and sundry for everyone. This accessibility also uh, kind of conforms to our 10x engineering behavior. Uh, that's probably a talk for a later time, and you can probably have those discussions with us around what we call 10x behaviors in our booth outside. Uh, but how does this help? We also get all these concepts together and we have our old code companions, we have our own inbuilt generative AI tools that we have built that help our engineers comprehend and build for these experiences also. Right? Uh, quickly doing a summary of all that we've spoken so far and uh, trying to break it down a little further. So we spoke about perceivable which is basically how do you have the like-to-like -like usability for everyone, making sure everybody experiences the same thing the same way. Talking about operable, how do you organically grow to make sure that all that you're building is easy to access and navigate for everyone? That's operable for us. Going to understandable, it's basically making sure that you're validating content for cons consistency, context, and relevance. Last but not the least, you would have guessed, Robust is making sure that you have ease of use for each and every user. So you see, that's how you achieve accessibility. So the next time you want to ask Alexa, or if somebody asks you, how do you make your sites accessible? The answer is simple, right? Pour some love in it. That's all we had. Thank you so much. <laughs>